I'm Bonnie Ravikoff, and this week we are in the kitchen at EBT. Before we get in and start cooking, we're going to talk to their general manager, Adam Horner. Adam, thank you for inviting me into your kitchen. Well, thank you for being here, Bonnie. We're very excited to have you here. Okay, so EBT has a wonderful history in Kansas City. Definitely. Let's talk about it for those who don't know. Sure. Uh, well, the restaurant uh, was opened in 1979, and it's been in this location since it was a restaurant. Uh, EBT stands for Emory Bird and Thayer, which, uh, as a lot of longtime Kansas City residents remember, uh, was a department store in downtown Kansas City uh, between 11th and 13th, Grand and Walnut, mm -hmm. and it stood there for many, many years. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is that before it was Emory Bird Thayer, the department store, it was Emory Bird Thayer, a dry goods company. I didn't know that. And no. It was actually a dry goods company by another name, so the restaurant actually has historical ties to the city dating back to the late 1800s. The Emory Bird Thayer warehouse is still uh, up downtown, and it still says Emory Bird Thayer on the outside of the building in its loft apartments now. See, we just we just don't like to get let go of the good things well, you know, here. There's a lot of things that... Uh, and I love what you also yeah. did. You captured some of the architectural elements that are near and dear to us, such as... Absolutely. The wonderful elevators that are now booths here and some of the architectural pieces with your columns. You took that with you, along with, I think, the tradition for excellence. Sure, absolutely. When the Kemper family bought the property where the department store was, um, and they, they tore it down to, to replace the building with the, with the UMB Bank building, they saved you know a number of architectural elements. So, so that's how that happened. Exactly, mm -hmm. and so they were actually saved for a number of years before they were actually installed into the restaurant. So there was some foresight there in the planning um, and in the destruction of that building to, to hold on to some of these very, very unique and one-of-a-kind elements. Uh, you mentioned the brass elevator cages that sit behind you. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two of them and they're available for reservations on a first-come, first-served mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. People love them. Okay, so let's talk about the dining. Obviously, the ambiance, the space, you've taken great care to keep this a quiet restaurant. You sure. can actually hear sure. your conversation with your mm -hmm. dinner guest. All right, let's talk about the food. What's the concept of the food here? The, the concept of the food is, is really very simple. Okay. Uh, you know, Chef Tate's not here to surprise anybody or try and put something in front of you that is unrecognizable or unfamiliar. Uh, Needs defined. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. You know, his, his uh, philosophy in mind as well is that we want guests to be able to come in here and, and have a dining experience and, and eat food that is simply prepared using as many fresh and local ingredients as we can, mm -hmm. but at the same time, preparing things that you can't easily replicate at home, which is why you come out to get them. Right. Um, you know, we're, we deem ourselves a contemporary American restaurant, okay. um, so conceptually, I guess that's where you would you would go with it, but uh, Tate has such a passion and a flair for uh, Latin flavors and Asian flavors, you know, and America's a melting pot, and we all know the cliche. Really, uh, you know, just well executed, some classic dishes, some more on the contemporary side. We want to be able to attract uh, both some of the more adventurous diners that are out there and, and some of the more traditional diners that are out there. Let's talk about the bar because you're doing some interesting things Absolutely. there. Yep. What's, hap what's happening there? So what we've done with that cocktail list is we, we've taken uh, traditional cocktails, mm -hmm. classic cocktails, uh, some that may have been lost, some that may have been forgotten, uh, and we've taken them and kind of given them a little twist, a little spin, uh, maybe some some contemporary ingredients or just a little bit of a recipe change yes. to bring them into the 21st century. And, Give me an example of one. Uh, like, uh... Well, one of my favorites is our Green Eyed Monster Gimlet. Okay. And uh, each cocktail kind of has a kitschy name that I, I try to come up with. Okay. Uh, some of them are cheesy, I'm not going to lie. And uh, But we like cheesy. Exactly. <laughs> but I, I wanted them to each to kind of get an identity of sorts. Um, and so the, that Gimlet is Hendrix Gin and it's shaken and served up and mixed with a uh, house-made syrup which is a basil and lime infused syrup. Oh my. So a new so. look and taste for a gimlet, which exactly. is an old, a traditional exactly. drink. Mm -hmm. And your wine list, I know you we just are, got we're, a great thing going yeah, there. Well, there are a lot of wines out there that are priced for the restaurant that we can offer by the glass. Uh, and it, and it still works, be great. Right. And what's great about that is, you know, some of these new wines by the glass might be in the $17, $18 a glass, $19 a glass range, uh, but these are also wines that traditionally are 80 90 to 100 dollars a bottle and but so, you can have a glass of exactly it. and you're rolling out a new menu mm -hmm, which absolutely. is which is out now correct 
and we're going to make one of those. I know. I wish we could, I wish we could make them all. They're all fantastic. I really do. Well, thank you again for inviting us into your kitchen. You. We're going to go chat with the chef, and then Perfect. we're going to go in the kitchen to make that signature dish. All right, outstanding. All thank right, you. thank you, Bob. We continue our chat with the chef, with the executive chef here at EBT, Tate Roberts. Chef, thank you for inviting us into your kitchen. No problem. You've been chef here for seven years. That is correct. What is what was your journey to EBT? Oh well, uh, I started out in art school in 1996 in Hutchinson, Kansas. How many times has a chef said that to me? That there is mm -hmm. a great connection. It's just an ex creative expression. Yeah. yeah so you were going to be an artist. Yeah, I had, uh, three years of oil painting and fine art studies and. Uh, Got to meet a lot of interesting people along the way, and all those people love to eat. How about that? Well, at first it was, uh, my mother at one point was working three jobs, uh, and I remember... You needed to help. Yeah. One day, I, I could have been four years old. Oh, that's and a little. And it was a, really one of my first memories of life, and uh, she was crying. I was uh, like, Mommy, what's wrong? You know, and uh, she was just tired. Yep. But she just well, she just made up some excuse that you tell your child, you know. Didn't want to worry And I you. said, well, let me finish. And she was making pork chops. Driest pork chops I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> but I, you made them. I cooked the darndest out of them. Yeah, and, yeah. But then I, I realized that I liked it. And so from then forward, I uh, we didn't get cable television until I was about 12 years old. And then I saw Great Chefs of Chicago on a Discovery Channel. I see. Wow. Oh my goodness. And I never dreamt that I would ever be in a place like this. I believe in the, the old style of food preparation and through that is it, it's not just a preparation, it's a mindset. It's um, I wake up every morning knowing that my role is to be the chef. And many people rely on what my actions are. What is your inspiration in the kitchen? My inspiration, I love stopping in the middle of the dinner rush and taking a step back in third person okay. and watching what I'm doing and watching what all these people around me are doing and then watching the plates come back from the dining room empty. So what are some of the things that you're putting in place to put EBT where you want it to be? What's your vision to get there? Good food. Good food. Boy, it's as simple as that, mm -hmm. isn't it? How yeah. do you make the good food happen? Simple. Simplicity. Straightforward. Simple ingredients. No uh, no processed foods. Thank you. We're cooking from scratch. I am just grew up with that don't quit attitude. And that's, that's what I brought in here. Okay. So that never say die, kind yeah. of. And, but the artistic expression of painting. Mm -hmm. A friend who obviously was someone who knew you well, gently pushed you to, and yeah. so many, we have so many chefs from Johnson County Community College's culinary program, yeah, it's and they ha it's outstanding. So you had the professional training, mm -hmm. and then really connected to, hey, I don't have any illusions about being in, in a professional kitchen, because that was part of the deal. That's part of your yeah. education process. That was a shock. <laughs> you know, I asked chefs if you were advising someone who thought they might be interested in this industry, how would you tell them to begin that exploration? And they say, get into a, a commercial kitchen. Mm -hmm. Just even if you stand there. Yeah. Because if you have any illusions that it's what's like television, it looks like television, that's yeah. just the Hollywoodized mm -hmm. version of what you do yeah. every day. Yeah, and I, if, if, if I'm ever a part of something big, yeah. it won't be because I was chasing it. It would be because that just happened to come across what I think is right. And what I'm doing is I try to be positive, try to be honest, and I push out the food the same way. And I. I, Integrity. Whenever I started the culinary program, a man by the name of Jerry Vincent, he created that program in the 70s. Okay. Uh, I was honored enough to be a student there right before he retired, and he told me to write an essay, handwritten with a pencil, why I wanted to be a chef. Good. 
good question. And the basic theme of that entire paper, I still have it. I barely read it because it's in pencil, but it says, good food created by a good person will make a grumpy person happy. Isn't that true? I mean, that's the very basic element of what? nurturing. You know, mothers and grandmothers, when I used to get handwritten recipes from family members. Love those. I do too, and I save them, of course, and frequently they'll be the last ingredient in love, made with love, mm -hmm. and the more chefs that I talk to say how you feel, the emotions that you are experiencing while you're cooking translate it to the plate. It goes right into the food. So, And you feel that way too? Yeah, I 100%. Okay, chef, well, I think you and I need to go into the kitchen and make that halibut a la Chanel. Am yes, I saying that, that right? that is correct. Okay, and I think you need to come with us. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, and we are now in the kitchen at EBT with their executive chef, Tate Roberts. Chef, we're going to make one of your new signature dishes with halibut. What's our mise en place? Well, we've got some fresh Alaskan halibut, of course. Um, this is a dish that's composed of uh, fresh little neck clams, sherry, leeks, shallots, garlic, tomatoes, Yukon potatoes, spinach, and tarragon. Then we're gonna finish it off with some whole butter. Oh, yeah. Okay, so where do we begin, Chef? Where do we begin? We begin. Well, we begin with the fish, it takes the longest to cook. So I've got some really nice olive oil here. Yeah. And just to remind our viewers that you are making sure the pan is hot first. Very hot. If Very it, hot. If and it's not hot, it will stick. Yes. And we have you, to be brave about this. We always think it won't. It, it will stick, but if the pan's hot enough, it won't. Well, I say if it's hot enough to make your house smoky, yes. it's hot enough oh, to cook. Okay. There we go. And we're down. That's gorgeous halibut. That's gorgeous. And we're not going to touch this. Oh, please don't touch <clears> the fish. We're not going to touch it until it has a nice sear, nice crust. If you don't, it's it won't stick. flip. Yeah, it won't flip. When it's ready to be flipped, it'll let you know. Right. And you know, you just have to trust that it's going to flip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Never, so and, if you're, and never be afraid of it. No. Courage. Yeah. Okay, all right. Courage yeah. under fire. I know, but that's, your, that's how you live every day. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start the sauce while that's cooking. Once again, we've got olive oil. Yes. Some nice fresh shallots. Some nice leeks. Okay. And we are in the kitchen with Bonnie. I'm doing that. What did you just put in, Chef? This was minced garlic. Ooh, yeah. Well, I've noticed that the leeks and the shallots go down before the garlic because the garlic cooks fast. That is correct. Okay. Now, right before this garlic starts to get nice and caramelized, you want to take oh, it. The smell. You want to take it to right before it burns. Okay. We won't burn it. No. And the then tomatoes have a lot of water in them, so we're going to take those down. Mm -hmm. Cook the water out of these tomatoes. We're just providing a little bit of moisture, liquid mm -hmm. for the dish. And it's also allowing the. Uh, the onions and garlic to not burn because it's giving them a little bit of water to hold on to. So the order in which you cook does have a, a significant effect on the outcome of the dish. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the industry we call it layers of flavor. Layers, yeah. And this okay. is another layer that we salt. And that is kosher salt? That's kosher salt. Fresh cracked pepper. Fresh cracked pepper. I'll see. Now we got the halibut. We've got a hot oven we're going to go into here. So we're finishing it in the oven? Yes. Okay. If I had a thinner piece of fish, obviously I would cook it on the top because I want I want to allow ample time for it to cook without hurrying it. Okay. And I don't want to burn it. No, it's too beautiful. Mm -hmm. And now we've got our clams we're going to throw in. And make sure that if you touch them, they open, then they're okay, right? If, you t if they're open and you touch them and they close? Yes. They're alive. They're alive. Yeah. And the object is to keep the, okay, Yukon gold potatoes. Yukon gold potatoes and clam, fresh clam juice. Mm. We're going to put these in and uh, put a spoon here. So you can see a little better. And what's happening is uh, the fond de vous, that's the 
darkness on the bottom of the pan. That's flavor. Yeah. And our goal is to get that flavor back. That is correct. And so you did that by putting clam juice in. Yeah, and the potatoes actually become the vessel that soaks up all that juice in the long uh -huh. at the end. Does the starch from the potato also help thicken this Absolutely. mixture? Absolutely. But I don't cook it so long that they become mushy. Uh -huh. Cook them till they become al dente. Okay. So there's something to eat. You got oh, a little yeah. bite. We're serious about this. Yeah, yes, we're we gonna are. we're gonna reduce this just to help our clams. See, they when they start to open up, they're done, and they're they're very very it's very so easy very to hard. overcook. It's so easy mm -hmm. to overcook them, and then they get that chewy, unpleasant mouthfeel, yep. which we're not going to do. Look, they're no. starting to open now. They're starting to it open now. It almost looks like you're not cooking them long enough when you do it, but that's not so. Because we can tell when they open up. Mm -hmm. They're coming out to see you. That is correct. Yes, they are. Okay. Now we're going to add some fresh sherry. Fresh. Mm -hmm. What does fresh sherry mean? Well, you never know. You know, seafood and sherry are a very, it's very, a match, isn't very it? good combo. Yeah, they are. Now, if you can't have any alcohol in your diet, could you use a chicken broth or a oh, vegetable absolutely. stock? Or, uh, okay. You know, lemon juice. Uh, You're looking lime for some juice. acid. Yeah. Yeah. And the sherry. It, it's one of my favorite cooking ingredients oh, because it's wonderful. when it's reduced, it has a it has a flavor that it's just it's mm -hmm. it's surpassed, mm -hmm. and especially with seafood and. And I use a little bit of tarragon because when, nice. when this sherry is reduced, it has a nice tarragon essence to it. Yes. Yes. So this dish is cooked from start to finish, everything raw. And that's, that's why I highlight this as one of our And your most sister's interesting. the inspiration that for it. That is correct. We'll have to thank her personally. Well, if she watches it, I'll just say hello, Chanel. I know you can do that. Because <laughs> she can wherever she lives. Okay, now we're Beautiful. now we're yeah. gonna add another layer of flavor here. Okay, what do we? This baby is spinach. Fresh, fresh baby spinach. With and the and stems it always removed. looks like it's going to be too much, but that just goes down. It just it just shrinks. Yeah, so. it, it just cooks right up. And that bright green, fresh flavor. Mm -hmm. You're just all of our senses are gonna have a celebration with this dish because there's something for everyone right here. That's exactly correct. Ooh, yum. And this this broth. It's absolutely amazing at this point. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna continue to reduce about another 50%. What I'm doing here is I'm kind of piling up. It's almost like basting it, isn't it? Yes, yeah, and uh, you know, it's it's just close attention to what's happening. You know, I really care about this potato. Mm -hmm. I care about this guy. Yep. You know, all these guys, basically. Everyone's getting all your friends, attention yeah. and all your care at the same time. Yes. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Look at those colors. And right at the end. Okay, and this is important not to do this in the beginning, but at the end. Yes. This is one of my, uh, I was trained classic French yes. cuisine. It's obvious by what you're doing. Um, I've been known to put big chunks of butter in Chinese food. You know, I, I, I love butter. Uh, it is my favorite ingredient of all time. You and Julia Child, you must have had some connection. <laughs> Of course, she's been an inspiration for so many chefs. And if you see here, yes, uh, he came up. He's, yeah, he's, he's saying hello. He is. He said hello. <laughs> okay. So butter at the very end just brings it all together, puts it, a little it shine, thickens it, thickens it. and, right and you now, don't have to have a lot. Just right now, our halibut oh, is perfectly good. Yeah, so that is perfection. And to finish this off is to get everything that's beautiful. Yep. A little bit more cherry. Mmm. Now it does, I'm told that when you use alcohol on top of the stove, the alcohol for the most part evaporates. So just, yes. just that yes. piece of information yes. and so, leaves the flavor. And when sherry reduces, there's a residual sugar. Mm -hmm. And that there is what you see is that gloss. Yep. Oh, that is. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Our very own polish. It's fish polish. There. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my oh, how goodness. beautiful is this? Yep. And we are ready to play. You know what? We are. Let's sell this ticket. Okay.
We've been in the kitchen cooking with executive chef Tate Roberts here in EBT. We've made a signature dish. It's time to plate, chef. We eat with our eyes first. Oh, uh, this is Not my that favorite this part. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, well, the artist in you. Yeah, 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 it's my favorite part of the day. Okay. Oh, which, look, a fun if thing. If I serve 200 people, that's that's a lot of favorite parts. It is. No, I plate it up with put these beautiful clams around the outside. And you can use PVC or just any, any type of, any type of yeah. little... And what I'm using it for oh, is to create a base to put my beautiful fish on. Because okay. that halibut is so fresh and so beautiful that we need to put it up on a little pedestal. There, we don't and want we, to waste one moment's worth of flavor. Yes, right there. And put that. Mm. Now, this is the secret. Ah, uh, if I had done Boom. that in an earlier dish, it wouldn't have had the fiasco I had. I'm gonna hit it from now on, just like you did. All right, here comes the main and our, event. Oh. Our sherry glazed halibut, mm -hmm. right on top, and we have halibut all chenille. Oh, chef, thank you very much for inviting me into your kitchen and for You're this very well. beautiful dish. I think we need to go to the bar, get it paired up, and then our celebrity taster. I understand is very hungry. Well, we should just feed him. <laughs> Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff. We have just been in the kitchen at EBT with their executive chef, Tate Roberts, making one of his new signature dishes, halibut a la Chanel. And now, what to drink with this creation? To answer that question, we're going to be talking back with General Manager Adam Horner. Adam, what should we drink? Well, uh, I highly recommend, I uh, mentioned it earlier, this wonderful new signature cocktail that we have, yes, the, green, the Green Eyed Monster Gimlet. Yes. Uh, it's a classic gimlet with a little bit of a twist to it. Uh, traditionally, a gimlet is simply gin and lime juice. Okay. Uh, what we're doing here is we're using Hendrix gin along with a basil and lime infused simple syrup. Mmm, I can see the basil floating to the top. Exactly, so we're going to mix up a couple of these and okay. we're going to give it a try. Start with a little Hendrix gin. Okay, right do you have some ice in there? I do, mm -hmm. absolutely. Give our syrup a little shake so that basil gets nice. And again, and that's a simple syrup with some herbs. It's a simple herbs. syrup with uh, the juice of two fresh limes and a good handful of chopped basil. And simple and easy. So I love it that we are borrowing from the classics. And Absolutely, yeah. we're doing that and we're giving it a twist of today. Exactly. And that's what we're trying to do here at EBT is uh, take some of the classic things that we've done bring them up to date, modernize the place a little bit, bring it into the 21st century. Give it a strain. Look at those beautiful martini glasses, yum. And we got little bits of basil floating right there. That's right. That's oh. right. And then we finish it off with a nice garnish. Fresh cucumber wedge. Cucumber says summer. It does. And then we float a little bit of fresh basil chiffonade just right on top. Helps kind of bring out a little bit more of that herb flavor. Those are beautiful. And I Thank think you. our celebrity taster is going to appreciate it. Oh, fantastic. I hope so. Okay. Now, so we have a before dinner drink. We, our taste buds have, are all refreshed from the basil and the lime juice. And of course, cucumber will do that too. Now, what to eat with, what to drink with this halibut dish? What do you suggest? Wonderful Sauvignon Blanc, it's New Zealand. Uh, traditionally and perennially a very high scoring wine. Uh, light, light in body, crisp, citrus, a little bit of minerality. And what's wonderful about this wine pairing with, with the halibut is that uh, the halibut sits atop this wonderful homemade seafood broth. Mm -hmm. So seafood stock and some clam juice and then a little bit of whole butter helps round it out. And so what this does is it'll help bring a little bit of punch of acidity and mm -hmm. citrus into mm -hmm. that dish and just help kind of let the flavors play off of each other. Uh, so a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. All right, I think we have our beverages squared away. Now all we need to do is sit down with our celebrity taster. Awesome, outstanding. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. We have just been in the kitchen at EBT with our executive chef, Tate Roberts, preparing a signature dish. We've been to the bar to pair it, and to taste it, we have invited Jack 
Posinger, who's producer and host of Jack Goes to the Movies. You've taken time out from watching movies to come and enjoy this meal. Thank you for doing My that. Pleasure. Okay. My pleasure. Okay. So, Chef, what have you prepared for Jack? This is a dish that I have signaturized here at EBT. It is called Halibut a la Chanel. It's a dish based upon a dish that my sister had in New York. She described it to me and I did my best to recreate it and it has become an uh, instant hit. It's uh, seared halibut with uh, clams and a butter sherry broth with Yukon potatoes, tomatoes, and fresh baby spinach. Mm. Okay. Please enjoy. All right, Chef, thank you. Now, Adam, what are you suggesting that we drink with this dish? Uh, the wine we've selected is the Kim Crawford Sauvignon Blanc, uh, a wonderful white wine, crisp, clean, acidic, a nice hint of minerality. Should really help balance a little bit of butter uh, and the richness of the broth, and they both should play very well off our Okay, and uh, you've prepared a cocktail for us. Yeah, what our, are we going to sip on first? Our, our pre-meal cocktail there is the Green Eyed Monster Gimlet, <laughs> Hendrix Gin with a green uh, hint of basil and fresh lime and a simple syrup shaken and served up with a nice fresh wheel of uh, cucumber. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Chef and Adam. So to your health, Jack. Thank you. To begin our... Jack goes to EBT. Jack goes to EBT, okay. Mm. Mm. Ooh, it's very good. So we took an old-fashioned gimlet and brought it up to date with some basil and lime and all right, now your task before you is to taste this <sighs> dish. Are you up to it? It's tough, it's, it's tough. You can do it? This beats critiquing movies, trust me. Okay. Most movies. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to just dig right in here. We love watching Chef do this. He uses the freshest, best ingredients. Everything on here was made from scratch. Mm. I'm. I'm barely controlling myself. Oh, you already bit into it? I have bit into oh, it. Oh, well. Are you enjoying this? Very, very much so. So he has sherry in here, and he used some of the clam juice and finished it with butter, but it's not overly done, and in each layer of ingredient. He added just that little bit of salt. See, it's not too salty. This halibut is cooked perfectly. You know, what's interesting is I normally add salt. For this dish, I don't have to add any salt, which is very unusual, especially mm -hmm. in American restaurants mm -hmm. versus European restaurants. Mm -hmm. That's because the chef has, as he introduced a new ingredient, he seasoned it as he went, so he never over-seasoned it any one time. Oh, goodness. And of course, the spinach, fresh, of course, baby spinach, not overcooked, adds that bright, fresh flavor. There's a second part to your slide. And this is heaven. Mm -hmm. The second part to your assignment is sipping the wine and seeing how that might work with the dish. So I'm going to say to life and to your health. To your health. Mm -hmm. It's a sweet wine, and it complements the perfect taste of this fish. It does. It really does. So it's that Sauvignon. It's not heavy and smoky. It's supposed to be brighter and one of the reasons it's tasting sweeter to you is because uh, you're tasting it with this dish. And it but, does taste sweeter. I know it's... I think when it's, I first tasted it, I thought it was it had a touch of Riesling in it, but uh, maybe sweet. not. No, it doesn't. It is a Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and I'm told by our wine people that that's why they spend the time and care pairing it so that um, the flavors play off each other or work in, if you will, concert with one another. Is it working for you? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. couldn't, couldn't ask for more. I'll tell you, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. All right, Jack. You're a man of taste. Maybe it's movies, but you're still a man of taste, so you're discerning. <laughs> tell me a little bit about Jack Goes to the Movies. I've been hearing you review 
movies for many years. How many years have I been hearing this? The show began on the old KY 102 mm -hmm. in 1978. You know how to do this. And uh, one of the differences I have compared to other movie reviewers, with the exception of specialty films or art films, I don't approach it as a, as a work of art. Okay. I look at more as manufactured entertainment or manufactured entertainment for the masses. Okay. Dinner Which and a movie. Which is what it is. Right. But, Which is what it is. But that's why critics hate me. Because I'm, I'm not artsy, fartsy, can I say that? <laughs> you did, so I, I'm not. Yes. You know, I, I think the average moviegoer enjoys a night out, sure. entertainment, better drama than television, better comedy than television, and, and, and that's my approach, always has been. And also the environment of a movie is the big screen, the the sound system, it's the whole experience. The entire environment, people mm -hmm. sitting next to you. Uh, that's why many studios make us watch uh, comedies with an audience. Oh. Instead of just four or five of us in the screening room, they'll insist we see bridesmaids with an audience. I see. It's going to play much better. You're also on Time PC Warner. On Demand, Time Warner, so Correct. we can see you and see clips of the movie there in addition to hearing you on the intercom radio on KMBC. KMBC Friday mornings and then I do write reviews for her and Christopher's sites, uh, kcconfidential.com. Yep. There you go. So just all over the place. You're all over the place. <laughs> well Jack, we, we appreciate all of the wonderful information you've shared with us over time. You've obviously helped us make decisions about which movies we want to see or what we can expect when we get there and we appreciate all of that and i want you to finish enjoying this feast oh i will I know. <laughs> well jack thank you for taking time out thank to be you. with us